Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm sorry I haven't uploaded a video in quite some time. I've been really busy. I've been focusing on some personal family stuff, but now I'm back and I'm ready to start getting back into the videos. I have been working a lot in the background, completely overhauling my ProMotion community. I've also been working on a whole new custom course dashboard and that has made it so much easier and upgraded all my courses to really make it much easier for everyone to access all of that stuff and just really I've been listening to a lot of the feedback over the last few years and kind of funneled all of that into this new system so I have sent out some stuff it's already live so if you already purchased a, co a course from me in the past then you automatically get all of this stuff upgraded for free you access it exactly the same way and the new course dashboard is immediately live I am going to be starting my Black Friday sale very soon so you want to also look out for that now what I did first was just create a bit of a solid here now this can be whatever you like and this color what I'm going to do is just I'm just going to use this sort of dark blue if you want to follow along exactly we are going to add a little bit of noise so if I go up here and just search for the noise I can add a little bit of grain and if I set this to final output I can basically just scale this up maybe bring this down to like sort of point eight something like that maybe scale this intensity down a little bit and under the animation i'm going to scale this right down to zero because we don't want it to animate we just want that texture so from here as you know from some of my courses if you followed any of those you'll notice that i go through a lot of layering techniques this in this in particular is one of them if you're part of the promotion crew community you can download this project file with all the files already included but all I've done is just created a new composition here and this to this what I've done is just basically created some text in there I've just simply typed out some text so that's all that is it's not animated or anything like that and with that then I can just basically come up here to wherever that text holder is and just drag that into my composition I'm going to add in some extra textures I've got these nice sort of line textures and when I'm looking at textures, what I'm doing is I'm sort of looking for different elements from that that I can take and sort of use together. So I'm gonna start with this background one, which is this sort of pattern here. So what I'm gonna do is change this blending mode to be something like soft light. That's gonna help it sort of bring through a lot of that texture from our very uh, back, back layer. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a few different things over the top. The one thing I like to do is just add a little bit of hue and saturation, drag that saturation slider right down. That just kind of desaturates it. The other thing I always do is add curves and then just really focus on bringing out or making it very contrasted. So it's like, you know, bringing down those black levels and then also bringing up those white levels to sort of really make it nice and contrasted. The next thing then over the top of that is I'm gonna add another layer, which is this sort of texture. To this one, I'm gonna make this one in particular divide. Again, if you don't know what the blending mode is going to be, you can always hit shift and just plus or minus on your keyboard to sort of cycle through them. But for this particular la layer, I'm just gonna use this. And I'm also going to add some uh, hue and saturation, just basically desaturate that. And then again, I'm going to bring up those levels. If I want more of this, I can bring this down or bring it up if I want less. So it's just kind of adjusting that, those individual layers to have more control over it. The last layer here, I'm just going to add this very sort of subtly over the top. I'm just going to leave it with those two textures for the time being. Again, you can sort of add in lots of different things, but when I'm finding textures, as I said, I'm really looking for individual sort of, you know, things from that particular layer that I want to add in. It gives us more control by sort of separating them out and then I can sort of dial up the intensity, if that makes sense. That's how you get like really, you know, down into the read, sort of like really getting specific with texturing effects and all of that. Then what I'm going to do is turn on my text layer and I can now sort of mess around with this, trying to get it to sit into my background. For this one, I'm gonna use the difference, but again, you could sort of just sort of mess around with it to kind of get a different look. This one does change the color hue slightly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add in a few things here. One is the fill, and I've just set this to be basically a, a very light blue. That offsets that warmer tone and just sort of brings it back to a more neutral. 
Then what I've done is also added in just a little bit of a rough and edges. You can also use a displacement map if you want to sort of link it more to your background if it has a lot of texture. That works, but I find that just with the rough and edges, it just gives you that a little bit more detail and fine tuning over this effect because you can control more parameters of it rather than just being like whatever's in the background, you're sort of matching. So it's not you know authentic to whatever's in the background, but it looks more realistic in my opinion. So it's just kind of like matching it to that thing to kind of get that bleed line from that edge. And I can also dial up the sharpness. You know, you kind of want those edges to be a little soft. You don't want them to be like basically like really straight. So now that I've got that, what I'm going to do is just add one or two more things over the top here. What I did is I had this image here, which is like metal scratches. I just could have kind of added this over the top and to this what I'm going to do is just add in the curves and then I can sort of move it around because it's such a large file I can sort of get it to exactly the sort of position that I want and then I can sort of mess around with this mode so I can sort of change it to screen or something like that just kind of get a little bit of that coming through and then I can drag down on these curves so you can see I can sort of control that output this is really just kind of a guide that you would use if you were trying to find a similar sort of layer. But obviously the settings that you use exactly on your curves are gonna be different depending on the layer that you use. Now on top of this, what I also did was I also added just an adjustment layer. And to this, what I'm gonna do is add the VR chromatic aberrations, and that just kind of gives it this little RGB thing going on here. I can scale this right down maybe to like the more of the middle. Maybe just dial this in a little bit more here. And then I'm, what I'm gonna do is kind of bring this in so it's just kind of sitting at zero. Maybe this one's at like three and then maybe make this one like negative one. Maybe bring down that green slightly. I even bring this one up to two and this one down to negative one. And again, I'm just sort of messing around with this and for this one, what I'm also going to do is just drag down on this little sort of output slider here as far as the fall off distance. And I'm also going to hit T and just dial down on the actual output. So this is going to reduce that opacity because we don't want a heap of this effect. It's just kind of, we just want it sort of very subtle there. And I think that's really what I'm trying to get at with a lot of these textures. It's a, it, you don't want to go overboard with them. Although you can use lots of them, you just kind of want to dial back that intensity by using, that's where I find that the curves are really good because you can sort of set limits um, on how much comes through. And then, you know, really dialing down the intensity of those other layers to sort of have them all quite subtle, but stacked together, they, you know, kind of make the overall finished effect. Over the top of this, what I'm going to do is also add another adjustment layer. And to this, I added the camera lens blur, and this just sort of helps us define the edge. I discuss this sort of thing a lot in my Animation Pro course where I show you different techniques on how you can actually add blur over the top. Blur is something that you want to be using a lot because it really is a very simple but effective tool for bringing your attention of the viewer into a specific point. I can basically come up here and just draw like an ellipse and then basically come down here and set this to be subtract. I can then dial in that feather effect over the top I find the best results with this sort of texture effect are when it's not exactly sort of level. So if you sort of bring this in like this, you know, it's not a perfect sort of shape. I'm just trying to make, you know, it's just sort of subtle, but it, it kind of adds that little nice little texture over the top. Again, just sort of brings that eye in really nicely. And what I'm also going to do dial this up a little bit more. If you also want to check out my Animation Pro course, there'll be links down in the description. That course is really aimed at more advanced users, people who are more comfortable using After Effects. I show you how to design and create really cool animations and motion graphics. If you're more of a beginner, then you can also check out my Animation Master course. It's a very similar course, but I go through a lot more detail in the basics. You know, walking someone through who's never used the program before. I'll have links to both of those courses. I'm also going to be running again my Black Friday sales soon. So check out for discounts coming for both of those courses. Now, the other thing I added in my original composition here was these sort of like stroke line effects. The way that I created these was I started with just a basic sort of uh, texture layer here 
And all I did to this was I basically just sort of added the uh, curves to really sort of um, make that more sort of contrasted. Then you can add a tint if you want to sort of add a little bit of color into that. But what I did was I just turned that off, created basically some stroke lines. So if I just have nothing selected, you can basically just sort of create a line that goes like this, dial this right down because we don't want it so intense. But then with that sort of position, wherever you need it, you can then sort of change the um, color of this to something like that. And with that layer, what you can do is basically set this to link to that uh, paper map for the track. And if you change this to be the luminance, you can then basically have control over, over what that line sort of looks like. The other thing that I then did to that was I added a screen effect to that which sort of then gets that to sit into the overall layer a little bit better and then to those layers what I also did was I added a rough and edges effect and that sort of then just gives it that takes the edge off if I go back to my original composition here one other thing that I sort of added in over the top here was this controller so I just basically went here new null and then I use that as basically my controller by selecting all of these layers and linking it to that controller. So all that means is that when I zoom in and out by scaling it, it's then controlling that. I also created then just a little scale keyframe by hitting S on my keyboard, creating a scale point at the start and then one here at the end. So it just basically does a slow zoom. The reason it's moving around like that at the start is what I did was I basically just, if I disconnect this, what I did was I created another layer or another null. And what I did was linked my controller to that null. So I've got one controller basically controlled by another. And to that, what I did was I created a position and a scale keyframe. If I turn this back on, I can relink this to here. And I would just basically move this to a different position. So I'd kind of zoom in here, move it to another position and then so forth. So I just kind of move it around the screen over a very short period of time. So not even, you know, 21 frames here, basically. So a very short period of time. Then what I also did was I created this sort of like a uh, very sort of uh, highlighted effect. This just sort of gave me a really good intro or starting point to my animation. To do that, all you have to do is just basically make sure you got nothing selected. Select your ellipse tool, make sure this is sort of set to white fill. You don't want any stroke and then you sort of just draw out a rough shape of whatever you want. Um, then to this, all I did was I basically would then add a, a Gaussian blur. Again, you can search for all these up here and just drag them on. And then I did a classic color dodge. I know there's a lot of steps here, but this is how you get really good authentic looking textures. And then together, what I actually did was if I bring up the uh, opacity, if you go to the stopwatch, you hold option or alt on your keyboard, click on that, you can actually just write out a wiggle expression. And that basically will just adjust that level up and down really quickly. So over time, what that does is just kind of gives that really sort of erratic movement. But to really sell it, what you do is you then add another uh, adjustment layer over the top. And to that adjustment layer, what you do is you add the posterized time, but set it really low. And you only set this to basically, if you bring the edge in, if it starts all the way back here, you just drag this way in like that, you know, makes it more sort of like a slow frame rate effect. So it's sort of more like jumping around rather than like smoothly moving. And because you can set that as long as you want, you can basically run this effect as long as you want by just dragging um, these out and then basically duplicating these keyframes. So that's all you have to do to kind of make this effect work. You could also, if you want to take this to another level, and like I do in some of my courses, what I do is I also add a uh, option or alt click on the position property for my controller and you can actually create like a wiggle effect. So that creates basically like a jittery camera, like moving around. You see this sort of stuff used a lot nowadays online, but that's how you do it if you wanted to create that sort of effect. 
And that's it. I think one other thing that I forgot to mention here was the um, outline effect. So it's like just kind of darkens that edge. All I did to do that was I just right click create a new solid. And this is going to be basically a black. And then to that black layer, all I did was I just came up here with that layer selected and draw out a shape. You can use your pen tool if you want to kind of create. This is the shape that I created for mine. And then if I bring up those mask settings, I just created a really large feather on it. And then change the blending mode to be something like soft light. And then the final sort of adjustment is just the opacity by hitting T and then I can dial this up or down. So that just kind of gives it those dark edges, makes the whole thing look a lot more interesting and professional. Again, I'll have links to all my courses down below. You can also download this project file and I'll also, and also look out for my Black Friday sale, which is coming up very soon. Thanks for watching guys. Stay creative and I'll catch you in the next one.